Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna Elaine. If you're new here, a very, very warm welcome to you. It's great to have you here. Today I'm doing my very much overdue, very persistently requested review on Fenty Beauty's foundation. This is their, officially, the Pro Filter Soft Matte Longwear Foundation. So yes, I do want to apologize that this video is so late. I had some dramas with Sephora online in Australia, <laughs> who hasn't, um, where they just decided not to send my order for like over a week after I ordered it. My beautiful husband, Mr. Morton, was on the website at five o'clock ordering me the products I needed because I was in a rehearsal while they went live. Um, and that day that they released, yes, I live near a Sephora store, so I could have gone in during the day, but I wasn't having the best day mentally. And the thought of facing the big crowds to try and get this in person, I was like, I couldn't do that. There was no way I was going to cope with that. So I decided to order it online. I knew that I wouldn't obviously get it straight away, but I thought I would get it by say Tuesday or Wednesday of the next week and I'd have it up for that weekend. Instead, it's taken a whole extra week. So I really apologize for that. I know a lot of you were, you know, really wanting this so you could choose your shade. And I do understand that many of the lighter shades are now sold out. However, it's not limited edition. So the shades will come back. Just wait list yourself and you'll get notified when they're back in stock. When I realized that there was gonna be a huge delay, I thought, well, I might as well make this really informative. So I went to store and grabbed samples of the shade as well as one shade darker so I purchased the shade 100 I picked up a sample of that as well as shade 110 which I will show in swatches in a second and I have been using the samples over the past week to try out the product to get a feel for it to understand how it works what primers I liked with it things like that how it mixed so I could get a really good understanding of it before I sat down to film this so it wasn't just a first impression a little bit of information about my skin I have a normal skin type it can lean a touch oily at times but in general it's normal and my skin tone I have a very fair obviously porcelain skin tone that is neutral leaning a little bit cool so first of all I think the packaging's gorgeous I love the glass I love that it's frosted I like the fact that it's a white bottle a little bit different to some other products usually makeup companies go for black I love the fact that it's got 40 shades I think that's awesome of Rihanna to be so inclusive to try and do the biggest shade range possible however I picked up the shade 100 which is the lightest shade and I mean I am very pale that is basically the premise of my channel I find beauty solutions for very pale skin however I know I'm not the palest person in the world there are so many people out there that are more pale than me I don't think that Rihanna went far enough with this she talked about how she wanted to make the lighter shades suitable for albino skin and I'm not an albino I'm just a very pale girl um, and I it's shade 100 suits me perfectly it's a beautiful shade um, but I just feel really sad for those that are lighter than me okay so here we have the product swatch next to a bunch of my other foundations in my kit this is the Fenty Beauty foundation in 100 and this is the shade 110 this is the Kat Von D locket foundation in L42 and this is the same product in L41. This is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation in Blanc. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in 102. This is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in Swan. This is the L'Oreal True Match Foundation in N1. This is the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation in Ivory Light. This is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation in Y205. This is the Dermacol Makeup Cover in 208. This is the Illamasqua Skin Base in 02. This is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. And this is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation in 0 0.5. So lots and lots and lots of swatches. <laughs> As you can see, the shade 100 is more warm toned than 110. 110 is definitely leaning on the cool side, but they're both actually fairly neutral. Like they're not. One isn't super yellow and one isn't, one isn't super pink. The claim that it's meant to be medium to full coverage, I would agree with that because on one layer you get a kind of light medium coverage and then on two layers, which I've done today, I've gotten a medium-ish to full-ish coverage, but not really. Like, I would say it leans more on the medium side than full. When I was building it, something that I don't enjoy about the product is that it gets very cakey and heavy looking. This is an extremely matte 
foundation. Probably one of the most matte formulas I've ever experienced in the sense that it dries down really fast. My very first experience of it, the reason I didn't like it, is I dotted it around my face as I normally would and started blending it in with my beauty blender and I found like it was setting. Like trying to blend it was a nightmare and I just had this patchy mess on my skin and I was like, I hate this. So the next day I tried just doing like one section at a time. That worked a heck of a lot better, so just word of warning. Yes, you can make it work and you can blend it, but you just have to work a section at a time. So I would put a little bit on my, this cheek, blend that in, pump it a little bit more for my chin, do that, and so work your way around. It does build up, as I say, you can do a second layer, which I've done today. However, it definitely, like, you can see the foundation on my skin, and if you zoom in, you can see how the foundation kind of attaches to your peach fuzz on your skin. I'm not a huge fan of that. Uh, I think I've definitely got formulas in my kit that I prefer much, much more for my skin type, but I think if you have a very oily skin type, I think you'll really like this. Shade 100 is a neutral undertone, and that's why I really like it. It's quite rare to find pale foundations that are more neutral. They're usually either very very pink or extremely yellow like NARS Siberia. So I thought it was really great that they had a neutral color and I actually love the way it looks. I think it blends nicely into the sort of very neutralness of my neck. Um, yes I do flush a little pink on my chest at times so some people will often think I need to match it to that but my neck is very neutral and I've tried pink foundations on my face and I just think they look too Wait, just too pink. I've tried using it with a beauty blender and a brush over the week and I found that for me, because it is such a matte formula, I like the beauty blender better. You do get a bit more coverage with a brush, but I just find that looks even heavier and cakier for me, so a beauty blender was by far my favorite method. I tried it out over a couple of different primers as well. One that I didn't actually like it over top of, which I was very surprised about, was the Too Faced Hangover Primer. I expected this to really help it because it would be moisturizing and nourishing under it, but it just, it's kind of got a tackiness to it, even though it is very moisturizing primer, and this just kind of stuck to the primer in a weird way, like it was very difficult to blend, so I I do not like that with it. The L'Oreal Lumi Magique base primer looked beautiful underneath because it had a luminosity, so I do think that one looks really nice underneath, as well as the Benefit Professional worked beautifully. I didn't use anything today, so this is no primer or anything, and I find that you do get a wee bit more of a porous texture uh, with no primer, so I think something like the like a pore filling primer looks really nice underneath because it helps to smooth your base a little bit um, Just so this doesn't look quite so heavy I do like the fact you get a little bit more product than normal you get 32 mils and I think for the price point This is $50 in Australia, and I think that's very fair because it's a high-end foundation But it's no it's actually more affordable than Too Faced Born This Way Urban Decay Naked Skin the packaging on it feels like Marc Jacobs kind of quality in fact I have a feeling if I remember reading this right it's made in the same factory as Marc Jacobs so I feel like you're getting quite a high-end product for a pretty reasonably mid to high-end price range it's nothing extortionate Rihanna could really charge whatever she wanted <laughs> people would buy it but she went pretty middle of the road which I think is great so my overall thoughts I like it let's just say that I like it I don't love it but I don't hate it when I first tried it I, I didn't like it like I, I thought I hated it um, and then as I've learned to kind of how to use it best I think it has a place in my collection, but I don't think it's one of my favorite formulas ever. I think the color is fantastic. If you know that you're my exact sort of skin tone, I think you'll love the shade 100. If you're quite cool toned, I would go for shade 110 because that is more pink. Um, but if you're more like me, where you're sort of leaning more on the neutral side, then I would go for shade 100. So who do I think this would be good for? Uh, formula wise, I think this is gonna be great for those that have a oily skin type. If you have normal like me, you can make it work but it's not gonna look very natural. And if you have dry skin, I would 100% stay away from this. I don't think this would be suitable for dry skin at all, or mature skin. Because it's so drying, it tends to age me a little bit, so I think if you have mature skin, it's definitely a big no-no. Briefly want to chat about the highlighter. I picked up the Kilowatt highlighter in Metal Moon, which I so thought it was a white highlighter. Turns out it's not really white like Becca Pearl. It's not gonna give you that blinding white highlight, but it's actually very beautiful. It's what I'm wearing today, and it's one of the most subtle, um, non textury kind of highlighters ever. Um, I know quite a few people were very disappointed in this because it isn't that blinding white highlight, but, but I appreciate the variety in highlighters. I think that the shade is gonna be perfect for me for like an everyday look. It's just very subtle. It adds a gleam, a kind of gloss to the cheek without looking heavy. Some of her other highlighters are very glittery, which is not 
my cup of tea. So personally, I really like this. I think if you enjoy highlighters like the Bare Minerals Invisible Glow Powder, um, then you're going to love this. If you prefer those very blinding ping, you know, uh, glazed donut highlights, then you're not gonna like it. So I think that was everything I wanted to talk about today. Hopefully I didn't miss anything, but if I didn't answer a question that you had about the product, do leave your questions in the comments below because I do answer all of your questions. I love answering your comments and helping you guys out. If you've tried this product and you've got some opinion on it as well, then do leave your experience in the comments as well. It'd be also helpful if you could list your skin type and your skin tone, like your undertone, um, and maybe some other products that you know work for you and you love so people can get as much information as possible. If you enjoyed this review then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, it does really help me out here on YouTube and the world of crazy algorithms. And if you want to see my last pale skin review then you can click up here and if you want to see my last vlog to learn a little bit more about me then you can watch that up here. If you want to subscribe then you can click on my face down here and I will talk to you guys soon in my next video. Bye!